I've known the McKee brothers since they were just tiny little kids. They were two of the funnest guys to ever watch because they're crazy. They would be in a tight match and they would look for a body lock throw or some crazy move or some crazy scramble when they already had the match won. Even from a young age, it was wrestling tournaments for our vacation and we would all travel as a family. My dad would coach us, my mom would even try to coach us. We even had a wrestling mat in our basement. We could work on moves down there. We tried different things too. Basically just go into our closets and we'd throw on like probably four or five long sleeves and then like four or five sweatshirts. And then we each had two robes and then we'd kind of line up like we're sumo wrestlers and we'd kind of run, <laughs> run into each other. When I go through wrestling practices, nothing else you know comes into my mind. I just think of wrestling and I think that's the best part is it's kind of like a little escape from whatever's going on in your life. And at that time, there's a lot. First time I heard about my dad's diagnosis was a couple weeks after the state tournament of my freshman year. My parents knew about it going into the state tournament that year, but they didn't tell me until after. We found out it was stage four chondrosarcoma, terminal cancer. So, you know, that, that was probably the hardest part about it. I was just kind of in a shock because like I, I'd kind of already known, but then Mitchell just, I remember he was, he was pretty heartbroken. And... My dad watching him through the whole process, he never, I mean, there was times he kind of broke down, but he never wavered in the fact that he was going to try fighting until the very end. In the state finals my sophomore year, they actually let my dad sit pretty close. After I won the state title that year, I got to go over and give him a big hug because I knew you know, it was going to be probably his last time watching me. I could hear everyone else, you know, the standing ovation, but I, it just felt like, you know, it was just me and him right there in that moment, which was something that, you know, I'm going to remember for a long time, and it was really special. Life was definitely just perfect right then, and. You know, I, if I, I wish I could go back and give him a hug one more time. Mitchell made a verbal commitment to be a golfer as a sophomore, you know, and he made that decision with his entire family and his father, which we thought was really special and really cool. But it was something you could see how proud and happy he was that he was able to help Mitchell with this decision. When everything was going wrong, we liked to practice a lot. Even the day my dad passed away, he passed away at 12, and we were at practice down in the cities like later that night. My brother and I, we, you know, we were both going through a lot, and I think we kind of needed each other, and, and um, you know, still do to this day. It helped build a bond of brothership between us. Mitchell was on the team. I wanted to be with him, and so I, I never really thought of going anywhere else besides here. We're best friends now. It's like we live together, we do everything together, so it obviously strengthened our bond. After going through something so tough, you have to be there for each other. The unique part is just seeing each other like grow up. He's helped me so much just developing myself as my own individual now. I guess I watch what he's doing just to make sure he doesn't do anything dumb, but he doesn't really do anything dumb. coming to an end now soon, so it's, it's something where I, I'm trying to cherish every moment of it. National tournament's gonna be in Minneapolis and a bunch of family's gonna be there. If I look out my, outside my window at night, I can see the purple lights of the U.S. Bank Stadium. I watched the Vikings growing up. I came down here for all the gopher duels, and so now, you know, the gophers are gonna be wrestling in the Vikings Stadium, so it's one of those kind of things, you know, that you only dream about. I've been to you know, NCAA tournaments. My dad brought me to my first one when I was, I want to say, eighth or ninth grade. I remember, you know, how cool it was, you know, the, the finals, the being in the center. Whenever I think about family being there and hugging or celebrating or whatever we're doing, you know, I always think about my dad being there because he's the one who, you know, shaped who we are and the road we, we've gone down, really. 
I think about you being in U.S. Bank Stadium and, and getting my hand raised in the finals and how the mat's going to be in the center. With all my family there being the ones who are going to be cheering if I get a takedown. It's going to be really cool and really special and, you know, once-in-a-lifetime type, type opportunity.